Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the rapidity and intensity of vasoconstrictor response to renin angiotensin system or in simple words we are going to discuss how rapidly and how intensely the vasoconstrictor response occur to renin angiotensin system or ras so in the last lecture we discussed that the kidney the kidney has a role for regulation of arterial pressure and it may play its role with the regulation of fluid volume and it can also play its role with the help of renin angiotensin system then we discussed the renin angiotensin system renin angiotensin system and to summarize it renin is basically a hormone which is secreted into the blood from the kidneys from the gg apparatus or juxtaglomerular apparatus when the arterial pressure falls so renin once secreted acts on angiotensin and angiotensinogen and converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensinogen angiotensin 2 with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs now this angiotensin 2 has two roles it is a strong vasoconstrictor and it also causes retention of salt and water both of these vasoconstriction and retention of salt and water helps in elevation of the arterial pressure that is the simple explanation of renin angiotensis angiotensin system now how rapidly and how intensely this vasoconstrictor response occur to the renin angiotensin system or ras now with the help of this uh, figure we are going to explain this uh, rapidity and intensity of vasoconstrictor response now in this experiment we take a, a subject and in the subject we uh, we see that there is a mean arterial pressure of around 100 mm 100 mm of mercury or 100 mm of mercury now the y axis is basically showing the arterial pressure in the normal subject this subject could be a human being or it can be a dog or any mammal so the arterial pressure in normal circumstances is 100 and now we are causing hemorrhage or we are decreasing the blood volume and we will see the response to hemorrhage in two different conditions in the presence of ras with the help of renin angiotensin system and without ras or without presence of renin angiotensin system so we see that when hemorrhage occurs when hemorrhage occurs the arterial pressure suddenly falls from 100 to around 50 mm of mercury in this subject due to hemorrhage the arterial pressure from this point has fallen to this point now the subject when it is having intact ras intact renin angiotensin system it comes into action and it increases the arterial pressure back to around 80 mm of mercury back to around 80 mm of mercury to around this point but if this renin angiotensin system has been blocked in this subject or it is without renin angiotensin system without ras then this arterial pressure only rises to 60 mm or 60 mm mercury or only a 10 uh, 10 mm of mercury rise so in the presence of the renin angiotensin system the arterial pressure is able to rise back to around 80 and in the absence or when it is without ras it only rises to around 60 mm of mercury or 60 mm of mercury this shows the importance this shows the importance of renin angiotensin system in uh, rising back or increasing the arterial pressure and is because um, the renin is secreted by the kidneys so you can see that there is a role of kidney in the regulation of arterial pressure with the help of renin angiotensin system now we have discussed the 
the role of ross in this uh, arterial pressure but how rapidly how rapidly it uh, responds how the how rapidly the, the arterial pressure rise back to its original value uh, with the help of ross or renin angiotensin system now you see the point at which the hemorrhage occurred has been labeled a zero minute the point at this uh, at which the hemorrhage occurred has been labeled a zero minute we have plotted time on x axis and y x uh, arterial pressure on the y axis so around 20 minutes around 20 minutes after hemorrhage the arterial pressure has risen back to this uh, this value it took around 20 minutes for the renin angiotensin system to elevate the arterial pressure back to some high point is uh, compared to the cns is compared to the central nervous system or the sympathetics which we have discussed previously because it takes 20 minutes in the cns or the central nervous system the sympathetics nervous system which basically takes few seconds the sympathetics acts in few seconds in trying to uh, elevate the arterial pressure back to its uh, normal level or near to its normal normal level but the renin angiotensin system is taking around 20 minutes so it is taking a bit more or longer time as compared to the central nervous system sympathetic response so that's about the uh, rapidity and intensity of vasoconstrictor response to ross or renin angiotensin system and we see that if hemorrhage occurs and the arterial pressure falls to around half of its original value from around 100 to around 50 and if the renin system is acting the arterial pressure will be able to rise back or elevate again to 80 mm of mercury and this elevation will occur in around 20 minutes but if this system has been blocked suppose for example we have blocked this converting enzyme with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors then we see that the arterial pressure will not be able to rise back to this 80 mm of mercury level rather it will only increase to around 60 mm of mercury level it will elevate with some other systems but it will not be able to elevate so much when as when renin angiotensin system was functional and the second point is that it will take a, a bit more time this system will take a bit more time as compared to the cns sympathetic system which basically is rapidly acting and that's something which we have discussed previously in our previous lectures so that's all about the rapidity and intensity of vasoconstrictor pressure response to renin angiotensin system thanks a lot for watching the video